Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever you're listening. This is Davisville on KDRT-LP 95.7 FM in Davis, California. We live at kdrt.org online. I'm Bill Buchanan, and I thank you for tuning in. Well, the Palms Playhouse in Winters is a fabled place for music. It started in a barn in South Davis in 1975, moved to downtown Winters in 2002, and performers over the years have ranged from Taj Mahal and Stephen Stills to Dar Williams, local musicians like Mumbo Gumbo, and many, many more. Well, this month, the Palms sent a message to its customers and friends, known as the Fronds of the Palms, that it was going on indefinite hiatus because of the pandemic. If that means the Palms might reopen someday, or might not, or anything in between, well, any of that is news. My guest today is Nora Carey, who bought the Palms in 2016 with Andrew Friday. I'm glad to welcome her back to the show. We last talked with her when she and Andrew acquired the Palms. And again, that was in 2016. Nora, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure, I'm glad to be here. I should say, uh, we're doing this one like all the others lately by Zoom. So if you hear stray, stray random electronic noises along the way, that's just Zoom uh, listening or, in. Or noises from my children in the background. Well, that's true. That's true. All these things are part of the soundscape these days. I do want to start by saying I was sorry to read uh, about the hiatus. I mean, I, I guess I can't say I was surprised. Uh, you know, indoor concerts haven't been allowed for a long time now. I'm, I'm wondering, could you tell us more about what you mean by indefinite hiatus? Sure. Yeah, so um, we are not renewing our lease at the Winter's Opera House. And that's primarily primarily because while our landlords have been generous in giving us a couple of months rent free, they were expecting us to pay rent throughout the time that we weren't going to be able to offer concerts, and it just wasn't financially feasible for us to continue. If if there were a known end date, you know, if we knew that the pa pandemic was going to last another year or something like that, I think we could probably do some fundraising and cover the rent. But with really no end in sight, it didn't seem right to to ask folks to pony up for, for our rent, especially since there are so many other really worthy causes right now. You know, people are hungry and jobless and um, not that music's not important, but it just didn't seem right to to ask for help when when we just don't know how long this is gonna keep going. So we're moving out of the building. But the Palms as an entity doesn't necessarily have to, to be done. Music is always going to be important. We're always going to strive to, to bring it into our community in some form, you know, whether that's through supporting programs in winters or beyond or putting on outdoor concerts or, you know, I, I really personally want to keep doing something with music and the community, um, whether that's under the label of the palms or not okay so so the palms will no longer exist at that location you know barring some unexpected change right but the palms as sort of a, a brand or a, a moniker might continue uh, maybe at a physical location and but maybe more as sort of a sponsor of events yeah you know i think that it remains to be seen what it's going to look like and I think that largely depends on how long the pandemic lasts and sort of what form our our new normal takes when this is all done. My parents have both been really active in the Winners Friends of the Library uh, here in town and they have put on a summer concert series at the in the Rotary Park at the gazebo every summer uh, to benefit the Friends of the Library and one thought we've been kind of bouncing around is whether we would want to um, extend the concert series beyond the month of July as it as it has been in the past and maybe you know put on a concert a week all summer and that could be partly sponsored by the Palms or or under the name the Palms or maybe house concerts or or traveling concerts or you know I Keeping music in the community is my primary focus. I don't know how it's going to happen exactly, but. You know, I, I should mention, you referred to your parents. Uh, you grew up in Winters. And, uh, I so did. You, you have lots of roots there. And so 
it, it gives some meaning to your answer is what I mean to say. Uh, yeah, my dad's parents. a musician and a um, music teacher. He taught music in the kindergarten here for close to 20 years. I grew up with a lot of music in the home. I married into another musical family. Um, my husband's parents owned a 16 piece big band for close to 20 years. And um, yeah, music is a really big part of our lives. So some version of the poems will continue, uh, at least we can hope. Yeah. Wow, that's still a kind of big news that, uh, you know, you'd be moving out of there. And of course, when the poems, this is before you bought it, but when it moved from uh, Davis to Winters uh, 18 years ago now, uh, the idea of the physical location of it was, was a big part of it because uh, uh, people have loved the poems over the years. So if they know it, uh, you know, it has a reputation, I think that goes far beyond uh, this region. Uh, that's one of the ways it's been able to get these uh, really good musicians, some very famous and, and some not, some locally famous, uh, to play there because the Palms has always been known as a good venue for that. Right. Uh, so the idea that the physical location is ending, uh, uh, that takes a moment to digest, I guess. Um, it's true, although I think, you know, people were equally pretty shocked and upset when the Palms moved out of the barn. I think some people really thought it would never be the same. Um, I still have people say, you know, I loved the palms when it was the barn and sure I'll keep coming in winters, but it's, you know, it'll never be the same. <laughs> okay, Change well, is hard. I, I have to add a personal note there because I'm one of those people who uh, went to the palms in Davis and I really liked it there, but I like it also where it's been in winters. I, I think, uh, you and then Dave Fleming before you, and then of course going back to uh, Linda McDonough who started yeah. it all. It's been a variety of people who have had a real sense of what's special about the poems. And so maybe I take your point there that uh, if some of that spirit can continue in some new form, well, that's still significant. Yeah, I think so too. We have to be able to adapt. So how are you all doing, you and Andrew and everybody else who's, who's helped the poems keep going? I mean, uh, you're not alone in having a small business that's just been hammered by this. It hasn't been easy. Like I said before, I have kids. I have two young kids at home. They've been struggling, and so we've been struggling along with them. Um, my husband's a math teacher and hasn't had a lot of work recently. He's a, um, on the university level. So we've just been at home. We've been enjoying... Um, planting a great garden and doing a lot of cooking and some adventures very close to home and trying to make the best of it. Andrew has similarly not had a super easy time of it. Um, he's yeah. gotten really involved in the Black Lives Matter movement in Sacramento, has been organizing protests and, um, and actually has been helping with some of the audio needs of the protests, speakers and amplification. Um, so yeah, I think we're trying to make the best of a really rough situation. And we really feel for all the other small businesses out there. Yeah, that's, um, and you said that towards the start of the interview too, which, which I thought your point's well taken. There's, there's a lot of suffering and dislocation occurring right now. You know, the music obviously is still important, uh, but it's, it's part of a, a wide range of things. I wanted to ask you, your last concert then was in March, right? At the location right. of yours? Yeah, I, March 7th. And who was playing that night? I, it was I the Carolyn Sills combo. Carolyn Sills is a great singer and guitar player from Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz area. And she plays her own original music. And then she also does this really great Patsy Klein special. Um, so this was the Patsy Klein spectacular that she's put on a number of times at the Palms. I was gonna say you've uh, that's one of your repeat performers there. Yeah. So, yeah uh, that night did anyone have any sense that uh, that might be the last show? I mean well, the, news the pandemic was starting to crowd in at that point. Right so th that was a really unusual time we had had the show the previous night was canceled. I think a lot of it a lot of the sentiment in the room on those early nights in March depended on the sort of demographics of the audience. Shows with older audiences 
in early March were really sparsely attended and a lot of people emailed us ahead of time asking sort of what we were doing in response to the pandemic. And then certain shows didn't really feel much different from an average night. But I was already by early March communicating with uh, bands and booking agents for upcoming shows, sort of asking, what are we doing here? Are we going to try to postpone this? Are we going to try to keep going? And I got a range of answers. And so I think I didn't necessarily know that that show on the 7th was going to be the last one, but it was, you know, at least going to be one of the last. I was really pushing to postpone or cancel shows. And admittedly, I mean, understandably, some bands were resistant because, of course, it's their livelihood and they don't want to have to put a hold on that. Yeah, well, and I, I think it's hard to remember in some respects, for me anyway, what I was thinking in March about the pandemic. I mean, what I recall is that we all were kind of thinking or hoping it might not last as long as it has, which in hindsight seems naive, at least to me. But I remember thinking that at the time that, you know, well, maybe maybe things will be better by summer or fall. Yeah, we postponed a lot of our spring dates to the summer, thinking, oh yeah, by June we'll be fine. And then, you know, May comes around and we have another round of emails like, well, maybe we'll push these to the fall. And now it's just, it's really an open-ended question. We don't, we don't know. Yeah. What, what do you, what are you hearing from the musicians overall? As you say, it's, you know, it's, this is their livelihood too, of course, if they don't have venues. Uh, to perform. Yeah. Well, I'm in communication um, closely with several musicians who've performed here and just other friends of mine who make their lives as touring musicians. And it's been really hard. You know, I think a lot of musicians live paycheck to paycheck as it is. Some of them have found some success with online streaming, um, with, you know, donation-based concerts, or they've set up Patreon accounts where people can support them with monthly donations. And yeah. some musicians who have families have enjoyed not being on the road. I think, um, you know, getting to spend more time at home has been really special. But it is all tinged with this sadness and insecurity about how long this is going to last, how long they can keep up the online shows. Um, I've also talked to several sound engineers for whom this is, you know, huge and devastating and, and they just feel like what's happening to their craft. Now, if everybody's doing online shows, they don't need sound engineers anymore. And yeah, it's scary for everybody in the business. Yeah, I, I can say doing this show, I sure miss my sound engineer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doing this over Zoom is... Uh... And this is actually a comment, it's a little off the mark maybe, but I remember uh, discussing with a photographer when digital photography made it much easier to improve the average quality of a photo. But mm -hmm. he made the point that that meant that you didn't, you know, you raised the average, but you lowered the best expression. Um, I don't know if I'm saying this quite as cleanly as I'd like to, but. No, I understand. And, and it's, it's a similar thing. I think, you know, a musical performance where you've got at a good venue, it's built for that with engineers and performers that are doing it, you have the potential for a really wonderful peak experience. And it's just not the same if it's, you know, mediated by, by Zoom. It's <laughs> true. And Zoom. it's also been a big learning curve for a lot of people trying to figure out how to get the best sound quality in their bedrooms. Um, yeah. I sing in a, a local chorus and early on we were trying to, figure out how to somehow have practice over Zoom. And we soon realized that that was just not possible, um, you know, with latency issues and everybody was trying to figure out their own situation at home. And it just, yeah. it, there's so many layers of technology over the top of the, the music that it, it kind of loses the joy. Anyway, quick station ID. This is Davisville on KDRT LP 95.7 FM in Davis, California. I'm Bill Buchanan, and my guest today is Nora Carey, who is one of the two owners of the Palms in Winters at the Palms Playhouse. It's a concert venue, among other things, and uh, it's on an indefinite hiatus, which uh, Nora's telling us means that they 
won't be returning to that location, uh, but that something of the poems uh, may continue. So you've run the show for a few years. I wonder, you must have had some interesting moments in that time, uh, maybe particularly satisfying shows. Uh, I've seen a couple shows. Uh, I saw Peter Case there, I guess it was a year ago, uh, that I thought was yeah. a typically wonderful poems show. He you know, was comfortable and he was in good form. And Anyway, I'm wondering if you have a couple of moments from, from running the poems that might uh, that sort of stand out for you. Sure, yeah. Uh, there are a lot, but uh, a few really big memorable shows for me were um, when we had Trio da Kali come. They are a group from Mali who uh, released an album a few years ago with the Kronos Quartet. Wow. And they were touring with Kronos and then they had the opportunity to put on a few shows without the quartet and we got to have them and it was so powerful just their their whole presence on stage was was really mesmerizing yeah that was a lovely show we had we started this very low-key sort of experimental um sunday afternoon jazz series really just because well, I'm married to a jazz musician. My dad's a jazz musician. They actually started playing in a band together just a couple months after I started dating my husband. And, um, you know, I think they and their friends just kind of wanted a, a venue to put on some really relaxed shows, but then it gained momentum. We ended up having this Swiss jazz pianist, Nick Berch, come uh, with his group Ronin. And that was one of the most how do I say this? The room was transformed in a way that I'm not sure it had ever been before, at least under my watch. They had a lighting director with them who, despite it being three o'clock in the afternoon, just transformed the room to be this otherworldly space. The band were all in black and the lighting was really severe and the the entire rest of the room was really dark and so you were just in this zone and the music was amazing. I, I'm sorry I missed that just listening to you describe that that really sounds like uh, not your usual experience. Not our usual experience we really lucked out and then I'll just mention one more we had Hubby Jenkins come on two different occasions he had previously been in the Carolina Chocolate Drops and then sort of ventured off as a solo performer. And he just radiated cool, calm, and collected, put the audience at ease, had great banter. It was just a, a solo show. And I think everybody just loved having him. Uh, he interspersed songs with chapters from a kids choose your own adventure mystery book and <laughs> um polled the audience about you know should we turn left or right at the top of the stairs you know and we so we were all sort of involved in the story as it unfolded and uh that was just great it was really fun it must have been satisfying to be able to help shows like that happen yeah i'm proud of that and and i is it is that part of what you want to have continue in whatever form the poems takes? Definitely. I think it's okay to mention her on air. We got a lot of help and support from Kate Laddish, who uh, was a longtime volunteer. She started volunteering with the poems right around the time that it moved to Winters. And over the years, she's been lighting director, publicist, merch seller, you know, just all around helpful person. And she gave us a lot of support and direction early on about sort of the culture of the poems and how to help it continue. And also technical information about how to communicate with bands and, you know, how to set up the show. We were clueless when we started, to be honest. Well, you, it was a labor of love, wasn't it? When you and Andrew bought it? For it the really was. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, uh, you know, Dave Fleming had it, and he was, uh, you know, wanting to call it a career. And 
uh, you know, a, a place like the Palms, particularly to the people who develop real affection for it, uh, which I imagine includes the musicians, you know, it has those moments in its story that are like those hinge moments, you know, like, is this the end of it? And Davis had had to leave because development was crowding in on the barn. Right. And, and so it landed in winters and then Dave needs to leave. And then you and Andrew stepped up to get it. You know, the, uh, the pandemic, of course, has walloped so many things. Right. But oh, uh, one thing that Kate said that, that really stuck with me that, that I hope to continue in some form was she was talking about the, the shows where everything clicks. You just, you do all this work. There's this real scramble at the beginning. You don't know if the show's going to start on time. You don't know if, you know, the audience is going to be happy or if the sound's going to work out. And then not every show, but a lot of shows, there's this moment early on where you can just sit back and go, yeah, it, we pulled it off. And that is the, the magical feeling that I hope to continue in some form. Yeah, and that's partly the magic of music, right? I mean, music is kind of an emotional language. Yeah. And so if you are watching a really good performance, and partly that's a matter of, a matter of individual taste, you know, if you like folk or jazz or what have you, but if it's a good performance and yeah, everything clicks, that's really why people go to shows, right? I mean, and, and listen, as opposed to just have it in the background. But right. Because there's something that happens that's really very meaningful. Yeah, and you know, under certain circumstances, I think you can probably have that when you put on an album at home and sit down and listen, but it's, it's a different thing when you're in the room. There's there's some buzz between the the people on stage and the people in the chairs and everybody can feel it. You know, as uh, actually, no, I forget, was, was the Palms, uh, it, it, or is it a, a nonprofit or were you set up as a, a profit business? Well, uh, it's not a nonprofit and there was no profit, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was wondering, if, but what I, the, what I was leading to, the question was, you know, with the pandemic, there were a variety of programs that were designed to, to help small businesses carry on for at least a while. Yeah. And I'm wondering, was that useful to you uh, and, and to Andrew? Well, um, so there were a couple of programs offered through the Small Business Administration, but they were understandably primarily geared toward people on payroll, helping businesses retain their employees. And um, we have had people on payroll pretty consistently throughout our time as owners, but only a couple people at a time. But it just so happened that we didn't have anybody on payroll when the pandemic started. We were just um, in between employees. And so we weren't really able to take advantage of most of those programs. So, and so you, and, you and Andrew then weren't employed by the Palms? We were not on payroll, no. Okay. Well, I mean, it's remarkable. You, you, I'm sure, I can only imagine the hours that you've all put into it. Yes. And to think that it was, uh, you essentially weren't getting any, pay, you know, any paycheck for it. And as you said, there was no profit. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's funny. Early on, after I told my kids that the Palms was not going to continue, my younger son, who's four, said, so maybe this time you could get a job where they pay you instead of you pay them. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the honesty of a child, right? <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, but I suppose, you know, you were after something, I don't want to romanticize it, it's hard, it's hard work, it's hard work, with, you know, but, but you were after something, uh, different forms of payment. Definitely, yeah. I, I didn't have any um, impression that this was going to be a big money maker. So uh, a couple questions near the end, I guess. One is, uh, and you, you mentioned this at the front a little, there's, there's a lot of uh, places that are uh, supporting music. People who hear this and, and think, you know, they want to help, where, where can they look to help if what they want to do is help music keep, live music keep going? That's a great question. Well, there are a couple of organizations that are working nationally and more locally to, um, to try to get some federal support for independent music venues. There's an organization called NEVA, National Independent Venue Association, I think. 
they've got a great website. You can sign up for their emails if you want to, and you can donate. Um, and they're trying to get uh, some sort of federal support package. So they're a really great one that's doing some work currently. But then I would say, um, sort of bigger picture, find a venue that you love that's a nonprofit and um, sign up for a membership if you haven't. Um, we got a lot of great support and advice early on from the Freight and Salvage in Berkeley. Um, they're a nonprofit. They could really use your help. Um, I imagine a lot of people would put you on that list, Nora. They, they'd want to help you and Andrew and well, the poems. We have gotten a lot of very generous offers of support. Um, people who say that if we want to start back up again, that they'll help in any way they can. Um, we really appreciate it. And I feel badly that we aren't able to take people up on that right now. Um, to be honest, there's a burnout factor. Um, yeah. We were already, you know, struggling to keep our heads above water as are many other venues uh, before the pandemic. And this just um, added such a another layer of difficulty that I feel like I need to just kind of take a breather. Yeah. Uh, so I hope that some of that support will still be there if we, you know, if we pop up again in a year or two years and want to start something up. So does the Palm still continue as an organization? Uh, so I'm actually exploring what it would take to become a nonprofit. Okay. So that's one possible outcome. Um, and if not, it'll just be, I'm not sure exactly what the, you know, the tax structure will be, but an LLC or something like that, that, that could continue just indefinitely until we decide to, to do something with it. Okay, and so, so, but the point then is there will be some entity that continues. And I think that matters because the Palms is at another one of its junctions. That's right, yeah. And if, if there's still an entity that continues and still an interest in continuing it, then maybe it returns someday. Yeah, um, as long as people can keep an open mind about what that might look like, yeah. Okay, well, Nora, thank you very much for talking with us. And I really appreciate your candor about all this. Um, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Um, and people, uh, you've got a Facebook page and you'll keep your mailing list going, the, the Palms That's mailing right. list. So, yep. Okay. So all people can find that on Google. Well, thank you, Nora, very much. Thanks, Bill. Uh, uh, we've been talking with Nora Carey, co-owner of the Palms in Winters. Uh, I am Bill Buchanan. This is Davis Phil on KDRT. Thank you for listening.